I have not done this in so long. YouTube, what's good with y'all? It's been a minute since I posted a video, man. Like, I'm sorry, I do apologize to you guys for that. I think it's been like three months since I posted since you guys heard my voice. So I do apologize for that. Now I know what y'all are thinking. Mike, where have you been at this whole time? Like, what, what have you been doing? Glad y'all decided to ask. So the beginning of this year, y'all saw my graduation vlog. Y'all saw I just recently graduated. Shout out to the class of 2022. However, after that, we had to take the board exam, the NBCOT. The point of this video is just to give you all my experience in taking it because it was a journey. Best believe that. I mean, that might not be everybody's case, but for me, it was pretty tough. So first off, let me just go over what it is. The NBCOT stands for the National Board of Occupational Therapy. Like I said, I haven't done this in a while. What I meant to say was, National Board for Certification of Occupational Therapy. It's what you need to get to get your license after you pass your field work, graduate with your master's or, doctor, or doctorate of occupational therapy, and to start working basically. So for everyone that's not aware, it basically consists of 170 multiple choice questions, and then you have a CS clinical simulation portion which is basically similar to like a multiple select. You select yes or no to what you would do in this situation. They give you three of those and you have four hours to take it. So that's a little breakdown for it. So let me just go down basically how I, my study schedule for it. Let me break down what I use to study for it. So mainly for in the beginning, my studying consisted of the NBCOT AOTA pack. I just call it AOTA. What that is, is basically it has 16 or 17 chapters going over various topics, neurological, uh, pediatrics, um, burns, a whole bunch of topics that will be on the exam. And thankfully, me and my class, we all contributed to, we basically all bought the group package, so it made the cost a little cheaper. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was around 130, I, I don't know, I, I'm not for sure, but. It makes things cheaper if you buy it with your cohort. I use access of AOTA. They also, at the end of every chapter, they give you a multiple choice, like multiple choice questions that you could uh, test yourself on. They actually are really, they're really nice actually. It goes, they ranks them from easy, medium, hard, or difficult rather, whatever it was. I think overall it has like a thousand questions. It was, it was a ton of them. It has 80 CST questions over various sources because when you take the CST portion, you don't know what you'll be getting. <laughs> it could be the most random subject you may never even seen of. Not to scare you, of course. And then it also has a, a simulated CST actual like se section with the three portions of each question. And then a practice 170 question test. It's very simulated to the, it gives you a lot of resources. Like, I, it's, a, it's a good resource in my opinion. I use that, then also the NBCOT study pack, um, the one off the actual website. So that consists of a pre-test, um, 100 question multiple choice test. And there are actually two other practice tests you could buy that are 100 questions. And then it has a full practice test, which that one's free. Also has mini games, flashcards. It has mini, it has like uh, mini quizzes study guide questions it's really convenient that source is very helpful because it's very simulated to how the actual test is going to be like the questions are very similar so it's a very good resource also i i went on youtube i watched a couple of youtubers ot miri ot dude who else i go ot rex ot over easy ot everything I, I i exhausted the list basically I did research a couple questions on Quizlet. I just typed in on my computer or my phone, NBCOT Quizlet questions, see if that might help. Um, I also did buy Therapy Ed, but the only thing I used for that was pretty much just the practice tests, just to see, because they get very good rationales. That's also what I forgot to mention about the AOTA and um, Therapy Ed. They give good rationales for the breakdown, because when you take the NBCOT, when you take the all the NBCOT examination, practice examinations, it doesn't let you see what you got wrong or the rationales. It just gives you the what you scored in each domain. 
and they'll show you the average of course compared to everybody else that's taking the exam so those are my study resources that I've used for this so let me get into my study schedule so for my study schedule it mainly in the beginning consisted of doing oh yeah let me start with um, when I scheduled for the exam so I remember I started studying the day after Christmas December 26th and my test date was March 10th that I actually studied for around 11 weeks before I took it so of course in my opinion I would say if I could do it over again I would say study between honestly between six and eight weeks it's a lot of info but you can retain it all in that amount of time but let me get down to the schedule so I would usually go to a library to study I would go from 11 10 30 11 a.m. to about 3 or 4 ish I would just go over each chapter of Iota depending how long it was if it was a shorter one like Burns I would do it within that day if it was a longer one like Pete's I would break that up in between like in between a couple days so I'm able to retain the information the best afterwards I would go and take the practice test for those set practice quizzes AO to offer for those sections and then I would just aim to get like a 70 75 percent every time and also after I went over all the chapters um because I did actually I was actually able to finish all the chats since I so long before my exam I was actually able to finish all the chapters so of course I didn't just want to sit around and not do anything so it's still like three weeks left and so then that's when I started watching more videos online. Like I said, OT Miri, OT Dude, OT Rex, um, OT Everything, you know, any video I got a hold of, I would try to just, I would see what I could learn from it basically, see if I could apply it. And then I remember I started doing this towards like the closer I got to my exam. I would basically try, I would basically try to take a practice exam, whether it's from NBCOT, Therapy Ed, AOTA, whatever. I'll try to take it like every two weeks or if I'm feeling good every week and see how I did. But as the exam is approaching, um, I'm seeing all my classmates, they're posting on Insta or whatever they're posting on saying they passed and whatnot. So I'm feeling good about it because like, hey, we were in the class, we were in the class together for two and a half years. So if they pass, I should pass. So that's already getting me feeling good. I remember the week of because I took it on March 10th. That was a Friday. On Monday, um, I took my full practice. Um, even though I didn't pass it, I did see a few videos that said that like the actual exam is harder than the practice exams, which like people say. Even like even non even outside of NBCOT, people say that. Um, so yeah, I go in. I go into the testing center. Just a side note: when you get to some testing centers, you might want to get there early just in case. Cause when I got there, it was a horrible snowstorm the weekend before so people that were supposed to take it then they were taking it today which the testing center was crowded so I ended up not taking my exam I was supposed to take it at 8.30 I ended up not starting it till 9.30 so in doing the exam there are some questions I didn't know questions I did know how a typical board exam would go so you know I go I'm looking over my questions all that fun stuff the boring stuff and then I take it and I leave so fortunately for me, I get to wait two weeks to get my score back. So in between that time, I'm just thinking like, it's like one of those like, it's a long waiting period because March only had two scoring dates. So it's like a combination of trying to keep myself distracted, but also like wanna know, I wanna know my score because you're used to getting it right after. And then the scoring date was March 23rd. And you know, I'm over here like, you know, thinking that by the way, in between that, I was actually like checking in like my study materials, thinking like, oh, did I, was my thinking right on this? Was my thinking right on that? Making sure I was able to recall the information. Pro like I, my thinking was right for the exam. And from what I thought, it seemed like it was. So then the morning of March 23rd comes. By the way, just as up, when they when your scoring day comes, it's gonna be early in the morning, like before seven. I remember I got my score at 6.15. You get an email saying your uh, your exam has been graded. So I go on there, I log on to NBCOT. Let me just say, when you log in, that's the most like anxiety-ridden login you're gonna have. Like you're gonna go, cause like you're gonna know if you pass as soon as you like log in. So I go in there and I see that the first thing I see is reply reapply for the exam. I'm like, what? 
And I was thinking like, why does my exam board look the same? Cause I'm over, cause what I heard was your dashboard changes. And I'm looking for it. I'm like, there's no way I just failed this, I failed this exam. So then I go to the, you go to the student dashboard and I go down to the exam. It says failed. I'm like, I re did I really just failed this? I'm overthinking, like it had to be, I had to be off by like a point or two, you know? Cause I, I thought my, my thinking was right for it. Like I uh, fixed the problems, I fixed the domains that I didn't do well on, on the practice. I'm like, there's no way. So I ended up getting a 439 on that, on the exam. Failed, I bombed it. Let me just go, I really wanna go over like what I, what didn't work this time, why, why I failed. So the first one, I was trying to memorize the concepts. I should really, and I know OT Mary, she like emphasizes don't memorize it, but I've always been a type to have a good memory. There's actually, there's a saying in my class, like people, my classmates and just people in general always made the joke that I have photographic memory because like I'm so used to since like middle school, like just looking at like the content the night before and just memorizing every bullet point and just somehow I got good at it, you know? But not for this exam. This exam, you actually have to know the information. The early stage of, a of like ALS. All right, if you can name at least three interventions for it, like on stage one, I mean off rip, I could already think of one just returning to the ADLs because of the early stage. And because they, they try to trick you with that. That's just a little tip to, I'm gonna make videos about it later, but that's just a little tip. They try to like catch you with like early recent. Know your information. That's ba basically just know it, know how to apply it because just a heads up in interviews, because I had an interview a week ago, like they're gonna ask, they're gonna give you a disease, like, CVA or hemiopsia or something, and they want you to, they want you to explain what you're gonna do from the eval to discharge, start to finish. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, when it came to AOTA, I feel like there's some, I like looked at it, of course I need to actually understand the concepts, but I never fully got to, I, I felt like there's like, I just didn't see everything on, like, I felt like the NBCOT consisted of more material because there were some terms, I was like, what is that? Like, it was just something I was missing. Of course, AOTA works for some people, it doesn't, but yeah, it's just like, I think I was missing something on there. Also, I didn't go over the ration. That's something I, I messed up horribly on, not going over the rationales. Please go over that, like, Matter of fact, for some rationales, it will actually, like, it will set a standard sometimes. Like, I don't want to give away anything, but some rationales, like, really help you, like, understand some topics. Um, then when watching the videos, just getting the basic concepts, because some questions on there go into more detail than others. Now, let's start with attempt number, attempt number two. Before I even get started, let me just say that the test costs $515 to take. When you retake it, it costs three hundred eighty-five dollars. Also, to get your uh, ATT letter, whatever that means, um, it goes by a lot quicker. I was actually able to schedule my next test testing date the day I figured out I failed. So this time I scheduled it for three weeks. I got twenty-one days to study because I was so close. I did the calculations. A four thirty-nine. I also called them too. They said that I failed by less than ten questions. So I'm assuming between six and nine questions is what I failed by. But point being is, this time, basically I was gonna use a different resource. I was gonna use different types of questions. I was just gonna start all over, start from square one. I watched a couple videos explaining uh, what people did after they retook it. So, whole new study plan. So, this right here. Let me explain where this comes in. The day before, the day I failed the exam, I called one of my classmates, you know. Me and him were talking, he passed his exam and just like, you know, what worked for him and stuff. So we were just going over, and like, I'm really thankful for this conversation me and him had. Like, I almost wish I could have paid him for this, for this, like, his time, because that, like, really made a difference. He told me that he basically, the therapy ed book, he read it from, from, from um, the, every chapter from start to finish. Go in there, know all the evaluations, all the interventions, know each process from start to finish. Now, of course, that's just for me and for him, for what works. And this is coming from someone who dropped almost a 500 on this test. Cause you need a 450 to pass. So I'm over here, I'm listening. I, that's what you did, I'll do it too. Sounds crazy to memorize this whole book from start to finish, but if it, if it will help me pass, it's what I'll do. Well, I'll say this, I, did, I read every chapter, 
but the first and second one. The first and second one, only read that if you just are curious about like facts about the test. I didn't see a purpose in that, but chapters three through 16, read those. So my study plan consisted of, I didn't go to the library anymore. It was basically just me staying home. I would wake up at like eight or I would start studying around eight or 8.30. I would go to about three or four. I combined this, the therapy ed book, with the purple book questions that uh, someone got for me online. So very thankful for that. Thank you so much for getting that because it helped a lot. So read the chapter. I would do, I think like 40, 45 ther uh, purple book questions. With doing that, I'll be able to knock all the questions out and see the rationales for it because the purple book has great rationales, a whole distinction to why what something's right and something's wrong. Kind of like Aota too. Um, and then Therapy Ed, what I liked about this book was it has everything, like, Every like everything, everything will look familiar. Nothing will be catch you off guard because it has pretty like pretty much everything. I took uh, the day after I figured out I failed. I was so eager to start. I took the I bought actually a hundred a uh, one hundred qu multiple choice question test. I got a four ten. Yeah, that's actually what sparked my like fire to go over this book because a four ten, like nah. I thought I just needed a little help, but I needed more. So I'm going over, like, basically I'm going over um, the book about a couple days before my test examination. By the way, it was on April 13th, this past Wednesday, or a few Wednesdays ago, rather. I took the full practice NBCOT exam. I got a 455. That's when I started, like, kind of panicking, because I'm like, yo, like, I did all this studying with therapy ed. And I'm only get what 12 points higher. I thought I'd get like 50 points higher. Like, I was wondering, like, what happened. And this is what I was about to talk about earlier test taking strategies. This right here, which I'll show later, I got from past the um, past the OT. Basically, they had a little saying here. Yeah, you go look it up, but um, it's from past the OT. What I basically got from it, it was. When you see like those long questions that are like four or five sentences long, you gotta break it down. And they recommend break it down like this. So look at the setting. Like if it's an acute setting, you know they're not gonna be there that long. So you shouldn't work on meal preparation or IADL or anything. Just typical like ADLs, like brushing your teeth or bed mobility. You know, the bare basics since that's where they first start out at. And then you go into the diagnosis. So if it's a diagnosis like a fracture, okay. So I took the therapy exam, I took it on a Monday, the exam was on a Thursday, and I'm nervous because of what happened last time, but at the same time, you can't have that mindset. And me personally, I feel like you really have to have the mindset that you're going to go in there and just, just kill it, just destroy it. Like, I personally, when I first started studying, I thought I was going to take it like seven times. Like, I thought I had no chance in passing it. So like that, I don't have that mindset. You can pass it. Um, like I think the look at least for my program at least we had a hundred percent passing rate. So it shows that you're you will be able to pass this exam. Don't go with that mindset that you can't. You've been in school for however long your program is. For me, it's like two and a half years. You will pass this test. Say that to yourself. It's all about confidence. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, what's called the staff at at my at my school. Cause they were they were so encouraging and they understood that like not everybody passes the first time. They were very helpful, so supportive. I'm so thankful for you guys. Anything I could do to help the program in the future, alumni help, call me up, please. I would love to help you guys. That's enough though. Let's get to the exam. So exam comes, I take it. I will say this, this exam I felt like I was more familiar with the content and information on there. Of course, there's some stuff that I've never seen before in my life, but that's NBCOT. They have to, they have to give you some questions you gotta miss. Go figure. But yeah, go take it. I wait the exact same time. The two weeks coming. I don't know what it was this time, but the night before, I'm tripping. I'm like, I thought I did good the first time. I don't want, like. I have the same feeling for the second time. Like I'm tripping on there. Like I don't know what to think. Like, I remember the night before, I woke up at like, man, this is actually a couple days ago. I woke up at like 5 a.m. I'm shaking and stuff. Like, I know like in two hours, I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna see like if I'm gonna OT or not this time. Like if I'm going to spend another like, and this is going into May. Like I want to see if I have to spend another like however however many weeks studying then, because it's the way thirty days to take it. Again. So it's around six o'clock. I just remember just pacing back and forth because they took a little longer to send the score back, which I know you guys don't care about. I can ramble on forever. Point is, I get the text message, I get the email a little bit before seven. Heart pounding to to look at it. I don't know what to expect this time. I go to log in, certification active. Oh man, after I saw that, it was just so much emotion. Like I wasn't even, I thought like if I was to pass, I'd be doing backflips in the yard or something. But I remember that, like I remember like, I didn't see my score, but I know I passed. Just a helpful tip, if you guys wanna see your score in it, go to the student dashboard to see it. I passed with the drum roll please. The passing score of a 460. Is that good? Probably not, but good enough. I'm an OT. Michael Harrington, M-O-T dash O-T-R. I'll get the L once my licensing uh, processes. But yeah, the feeling is great. Just like done with school. But besides that, what I really want this video to be about is I want to show people like, look, I'm not the smartest. We took this thing called the Aki. It's like a practice exam you take before you go into field work. I got a 46% on it. I'm almost certain that was the lowest in my class. I came up with the mindset that I'm gonna take this a ton of times. I have no chance of passing it. It's gonna be like, I'm gonna, the, the class beneath us is gonna, people from there are gonna pass it before me. I was hopeless. What I wanna tell people that like are in the same situation I am is there is hope. Change your mindset. Understand that you can do this. Tell yourself you can do this. There have been plenty of people that probably scored lower than me end up passing first, second time, like third, like however many times it takes you. This is a passable exam. It's not easy, but it's passable. I just want to give up. I just want to give a like a message of encouragement because I know that there's somebody out there that's struggling and stressing like I am. So I just really want this video to just be encouragement. And you know, I know I put myself out there. I didn't score the highest. But I do want to share that with you guys, cause that really like, cause I'm not gonna lie. The first, the if I would have passed the first time, then I already know this video will be completely different. But I really want to help somebody this time. You guys can call me crazy for saying this, but in a way, I'm kind of glad I failed the first time. Like I know that sounds crazy as ever. Who wants to study for three more weeks, like, and you no, know, not able to like start looking for jobs to make money? But if I would have passed the first time. I wouldn't have had a clue of how to do that interview where they were just hitting me with just like, just questions on the spot. I would have frozen on the spot. Thank God I read this book so I was able to actually have a, I was actually able to answer these questions and give them like a, the proper answer that shows them I know what I'm talking about. So in a way, I know you guys hate to hear this. I feel like it was for the better that I failed the first time. Point is I passed though. You know, so I was gonna share that experience. And I told myself that I wasn't gonna post any videos until I passed this exam. So it is what it is. You know, I wanna share my experience. And I just wanted to give hope to people out there that feel like this exam is impossible for them to pass. You can pass. And if you guys would like, I will link my email down here. If you guys ever wanna talk or anything, or you can message me through Instagram. Cause I really do wanna help people. Like this exam sucks, it's tough. I'm not really gonna say if it's fair or not, but you gotta pass it. So, if there's anybody to help, or you guys want to talk more in depth to me about my experience or tips I, that help me, that can help you, feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to help you guys. Until then, catch you guys around. I'll be uploading more frequently.